Hi, I'm Shannon from HouseImprovements.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to mark out a common rafter using just a speed square. Well, and a tape measure and a pencil, but just this square. So uh, I guess to begin with I should just uh, explain a little bit what a common rafter is. So a good example of a common rafter would be in any gable roof. So that's a roof on your home or your shed or whatever where you've got basically two slopes. You know, one going to the front of the house, one going to the back of the house or so, one side or the other. <clears throat> um, so that would be where you would use common rafters, okay? Right here would be an example of one half of a common rafter. So uh, this is set up at, for our example, which we're talking about just an eight foot wide shed. And if you wanted to build your own rafters to do that, uh, I'm gonna show you how to lay it out. So, so this would be an example. This one's already done, obviously. Uh, this plywood is just holding that end up. The other end of the rafter for the other side of the building would be butting straight into here normally. But Okay, so common rafter. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Uh, well, okay, let's, let's back up a little bit. So with that square, we're gonna be able to mark out this cut. We're gonna be able to mark out the bird's mouth and seat cut where it sits on your walls. And then this cut, angle cut here where your fascia will be attached. Okay, so those are the, basically the three things that we're gonna be able to mark out. So with any rafter, the first thing you're gonna do, unless you're working off a set of plans that somebody's already you know, spit out for you and given you all your dimensions, you're gonna to need to figure out some dimensions for your project. So uh, let me just stand this up here so you can see a little better. So this, this right here is the rafter that we wanna build or, or one half of the rafter that we wanna build or wanna lay out. So we need to know a few things ahead of time so that we can figure out the dimensions. Um, in our case, we're just talking about an eight foot wide shed with common rafters. And uh, we're gonna use a slope of 512. So that means that this, this rafter piece for every 12 inches horizontally across here that it travels, it's gonna move up five inches. That's, that's its slope. Okay, so we need to basically need to know those two things, the total width of the building and the slope of the roof. Okay, so we're gonna take the, we need to figure out this length first, which is from the center of the peak to the edge of the wall. Okay, now we know that the total building's eight feet wide, 96 inches. So that means this distance horizontally me should measure 48 inches, okay? And since we know that's 48 inches, and we know this slope, we know that 48 divided by 12, there's, tw there's four feet or four 12 inch increments in that travel, which means we need four increments of this five inches going up. So that's pretty easy math. Uh, four times five tells us right away that this, this needs to be a 20 inch rise right here from this point of the bottom of the rafter outside of the wall to this point of the bottom of the rafter. Okay. So there's a Pythagoras theorem is the, if you want to get right into the math of what you need to use. And that formula is a squared, which is the dimensions, you know, which is the horizontal B squared, which is the rise and that equals C squared. Okay. So we, we know, sorry, let's go over to this one. This is the first one we're working on. Same theory. So 48 inches squared plus 20 inches squared is 2,304 plus 400. The total of those is 2,704. That's inches. Now we need to take the square root of that to get the actual length from here to here, which is measured on this angle, right? Okay. So I've got that all figured out, that's 52 inches. So from the very peak of the roof to where this intersecting point is, is 52 inches, okay? Now, 
just about all roofs usually have some kind of soffit area. That's the overhang from outside of the wall to the fascia. So you need to also calcula calculate that in so you can get that distance from here to here, or really from here to here, which is the same. So it's the same, same uh, formula. We're, in our example, we're gonna use six inches of travel, so a six inch soffit from outside a wall right here. And uh, that, this, in this case, would be right to the back side of the fascia. My cameraman's yawning because this is pretty boring stuff. <laughs> so anyways, with that and the fact of our slope, we can determine that we also have a rise of two and a half inches in that distance. Plug those same numbers into the same formula we talked about and uh, we get a, a total of 42.25 inches which when you take the square root of that gives us six and a half inches. So that's telling us this length here is six and a half inches. So our total rafter length after it's cut is going to be 58 and a half inches. Okay so you need a five, five foot or five foot four or so piece of two by four to cut this out of. Okay, now that I've bored you completely to death, we've got our numbers. I've got this all drawn out here so you can plug any of your dimensions into this formula and come up with it, come up with the right numbers. Now I'm gonna show you how to transfer that onto this lumber so that we can cut it out and make an identical piece to what's back there that I showed you before. Okay, so you take your appropriate length of wood that you needed Okay, this happens to be the cutoff of when I made that, so it's already got this angle on the top, but let's, let's just say that it didn't. Now on our uh, speed square, if you want to know a little bit more about this, we do have a video just dealing with uh, speed square and some of the most common uses for it. But on the speed square, they're all going to have this indication here for the pivot point, which is right up in this corner. Okay, so that's what you need to know. For this what you're doing here and you also need to know these are the common rafter cuts right here so these are your slopes so we're dealing with a 512 slope so we're looking to use this number along with this pivot point to get the right angles all right so now we can uh, this is the top end of our rafter and normally this would be square right so you'd just put this edge you can see there's kind of a T edge here so get this lip right against your lumber on the top of the rafter slide it out to the point at the end of the 2x4 that you want to use as your top and then just rotate this until you get the 5 on the common rafter number rotate it till you get the 5 on the common top cut rafter table lining up with this edge that you've also got your, your point on or your pivot point on, okay? Now I've got to lay it down to do it, but uh, so, whoops. So once you have that all lined up, you can pencil mark that. Now mine, like I said, is already cut there, so, but you would pencil line that and it'd be ready to cut. So now I want to travel down, down the rafter from the point to where this, uh, line is going to be which is the outside of the wall and we already determined that's going to be 52 inches when it's measured on the, the angle uh, so we come down to 52 inches mark it here would it help if i just tip that up a little bit for you okay let me just grab something <clears throat> does that help enough okay so we've got our mark there and we need to, sorry, we're wanting to mark this line. Okay, so it's still on this same angle. That line is parallel with all these lines that we've already done. So that's still that 5, 12 slope that we need. Okay, so I can uh, put my pivot point on the mark that we marked out, which was 52 inches. Rotate it up to 5 here. Five inches on this on the common rafter slope and I can draw a line right across there okay now we, we need to do the same thing down here at this point so we determined from 
from that bird's mouth on there we need six and a half inches more. So I'm going to mark it at six and a half inches. We need to get one more angle on there while we're doing angles. Now my piece of wood is a little short so I just need something as a straight edge. Uh, I'm going to eyeball it but that's why I said you need a, for this particular rafter it'd be nice to have something a little bit over five feet long so you have an edge here to work with. But I'm going to kind of eyeball it there. You could put a straight edge along but it's going to be something like that. And that's going to be your soffit or your uh, fascia cut. Okay so we've got our three three lines that are parallel to each other for all our cuts. One, two, three. Right? This is how the rafter is going to sit. Okay. Now what we are missing is this seat cut where the plate of the wall is going to sit. Now ideally what you want to have is to, to keep strength here, you want to have two-thirds of your board width that isn't cut. So you can take a measurement here if you want, decide what that is total in length, it's about three and five eighths, divide it by three, multiply it by two, and then measure that down from the top and that's where you kind of want to be. Uh, I think it ended up being, I think it was around two and a half inches. Let me just double check on this one. That's what I used. Yeah, two and a half inches. So I'm just going to measure that down. So that's going to give us a, a nice strong rafter because we're just cutting out this little chunk and there's still lots of meat up here. Now on this, it's uh, the easiest way to show you. On, on your uh, speed square you're going to see these, this line somewhere around through the end there. Now I've made a little scribe line here to make it easier to, for me to find but if you line that up with this cut line that you put, okay, and slide it down to our mark that we had here and mark along this bottom edge of the triangle, that's going to give you your seat. Okay, so I'm lining this line up on the square right here with the lines on my board. You can do it this way if you want. I just it's harder to do it because the square won't lay down. Uh, actually, in this case, it's long enough. We can even do it this way. Gives you a little more line to line up with. So I'm lined up here. I'm lined up with the line that I can see in that gap. Uh, right about there. Yeah, and there's my there's going to be my cut right there. Okay, so I'm getting I'm cutting this off and I'm cutting this out, and I would have been cutting this little triangle up there off to get that back there. Okay, once you do a couple of these, it's, it's really easy. And honestly, once you've got one and you're happy with it, you can take that one part of the rafter, and if all the other rafters are the same, just trace it out and use it as a pattern. So now to cut this, it's simple. Get yourself a saw, and uh, first we'll nip off this end. I'm just going to clamp this down so it's not wiggling all over on me. Okay, so we're just going to simply cut that end off along the line we marked. Okay, so that's our fascia cut. Now this, this one's a little tougher because we can't cut right through. We've got to cut it with a couple different items. So we're going to use a jigsaw and a circular saw. So I'm just going to make the cuts as far as I can to cut this out and then I'll finish it with the jigsaw. And I'm going to be kind of in the way for you to see probably this next cut, but we'll see if it, I don't think you're going to see it, but Okay, so I just cut as far as I could there, right into the corner of the angle, and then I can use a jigsaw to finish that off. Now I would have cut the other end too, but it was already the right angle, right? 
So you can see we've got the other half of the rafter that we need. Okay. So other than a little bit of math, uh, which I've pretty much laid out here for you, you've just got to plug your numbers in. Uh, you could basically make the size of rafter that you need and uh, save some money. So a good little DIY project. This is this is a great thing to use for you know garden sheds, small structures, that sort of thing. If you get anything that's much bigger than say 12 feet wide or so, you should probably have a truss made up for that. Uh, but for small garden sheds, this, there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. Okay. So uh, hopefully that you found this informative and uh, it'll help you in your project and it was exactly what you were looking for. And I'd appreciate if you click the thumbs up on the video below. Uh, click the subscribe if you don't already subscribe to our channel. Uh, once you click subscribe, there'll be a little bell icon that shows up in, in, in place of that subscribe button. Just click that and that'll allow you to get uh, notifications if you want from our channel. So anytime we upload something new, you'll be notified saying, hey, House Improvements, that awesome channel, they put something up there new and I, you want to go see it. So, so click that and uh, you'll be notified every time. Other than that, if you want to follow us on our social media, we've got Facebook, Twitter, uh, we've got a forum, which is perfect place to go if you have any questions about a project like this or anything else you're doing around the home or yard. And uh, we also have links for all those and as well as Patreon and uh, PayPal in the description of the video below. And uh, those are the places to go if you feel like you want to send us a little donation to uh, help us keep making these videos that you've been using. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.